All right. Hello, everyone. Michelle Krosmer, registered dietitian here with Dr. Sean Hashmi. And the question we're answering today is, are oxalates bad for someone with kidney disease? And specifically not talking about kidney stones, but someone with kidney disease, are oxalates bad for them? Yeah, this is a really interesting uh, question because kidney stones and kidney disease when it comes to oxalates is linked. So it's hard to separate the two. But here's what you want to know about oxalates. So if you have a condition called hyper, which means too much, oxaluria, which means you're spilling a whole bunch of oxalates through the kidneys going on, that is linked to kidney disease damage. So specifically, it causes inflammation in the kidneys, it causes fibrosis in the kidneys, and all of that combined together does lead to progressive kidney damage, eventually kidney failure. Now, knowing that, and then the second part of that is, well, where the heck do these oxalates come from? So a lot of folks try to jump on the, the bandwagon of the fact that it's really more on the green leafy veggies, seeds, uh, roots, other dietary sources that are mainly plant-based going on, and that's why it's so bad. But you have to understand the physiology a little bit. And the physiology is this. When it comes to oxalate production, what you eat, meaning dietary oxalate, only accounts for about 20% to 40% of what goes inside your body. So guess what? 60 to 80% of what's left over is coming from your liver. So before we go down the road of how plant-based diets may not be good for patients who have hyperoxaluria, remember the majority of it is coming from your liver. That's the first thing. The second part of it, the same plants that we start to worry about so much, they have something amazing, which is they have calcium and they have magnesium. And what calcium and magnesium will do is they will bind the oxalate that's inside your gut and prevent it from going inside your body in the first place. So if you've ever heard of patients who have kidney, uh, kidney stones, calcium oxalate, what their doctor will oftentimes tell them is, is we want you to get more calcium in your diet, not as a supplement, but through food, because that calcium will prevent the oxalate from going inside your body. And as a result, it will prevent or reduce the oxalate you're spilling out there. Now, for everybody who's absolutely freaked out about the idea of oxalates in food, just remember, if that was truly the case for everybody having kidney failure, then pretty much everybody in all of the longest living people in the world, well, first of all, they shouldn't be the longest living because they would all be dead, right? So we have to look at that in that perspective. But the other thing is, is 75% of the oxalate you actually eat goes out of your body within six hours. So if you're a healthy person and you're eating lots of fruits and veggies, don't worry about the oxalate. You don't have anything to worry about it because your kidneys will get rid of it. It's only when we add in all these multitude of factors and we start to get kidney damage, that's where the kidneys struggle to get rid of the oxalate. And even then, Plant-based foods are better because of the fact that they already have calcium in them. They'll slow it down. So oxalate shouldn't be that big of a concern, even patients who are eating a predominantly kidney diet. Now, the last part of this really is, is when we look at 24-hour urine excretion of oxalate, what we know is that there are plenty of well-designed studies. There was a JAMA study in JAMA and Trilmet 2019. And what they basically showed is that if you look at oxalate, excretion, which means how much oxalate in the urine in 24 hours, the higher it is, the more likely it's linked to progression of kidney disease to dialysis. So bottom line there is, is if you have kidney disease and you are somebody who has a history of kidney stones or your doctor has said, you know, we did the 24 hour urine collection, we saw it. Either way, once we know that you have an issue with oxalate, we can actually use foods to fix it. But I'll tell you, in general, in all my years of clinical practice, when I have patients with calcium oxalate stones, I don't put them on a low oxalate diet per se. I fix all the rest of the issues they have, such as drinking more water and everything else. Even here, it's the same thing. If you're worried about oxalate, don't forget hydration matters right? You want to stay hydrated because even the oxalate that's leaving your kidney, it can't get saturated. So it makes a difference because it can't sit there and cause 
the fibrosis, the inflammation going on. So bottom line, yes, oxalates are bad for folks with kidney disease, but you have to understand the science. And as long as you understand the science, you can still continue to have your fruits, your vegetables going on. And if you're somebody like me who loves their veggies and a lot of seeds, then it's all good. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Send us your questions. We'll make sure we address them next time.